All of it really started as a dare. A simple notion of throwing care into the wind and embracing the thrill of risk as a way to break up the boredom of yet another long winter. So, armed with our love for adventure and a bit of a reckless spirit, Alex, Jamie, and I set off for a weekend camping trip to tackle the frozen lake. There were stories, whispers, tales about a wendigo haunting the woods around the lake. We chuckled off the thought, considering that that was just an old wives' tale to scare the curious ones. But we were curious, and not easily scared. We didn't think of ourselves that way, at least. The trip started under a cold, pale, gray sky and a sharp, frosty air. The frozen lake was sequestered from the nearest town by miles. It nestled with its dark peaks. As we hiked in, the silence of the forest was palpable, a quiet so deep it felt like another world. We camped right off of the southern shore of the lake, where the trees were somewhat scattered, and the water there reached out to full view and formed a large mirror to the leaden sky. The first night, we sat about the campfire. The crackle and spark of it was some little living comfort against the encroaching cold. The woods were still around us, too still. Alex made jokes about the Wendigo, calling into the dark with mock calls and laughter. I'd contributed, and Jamie had, to the laughter, but the unease kind, you know. The night had deepened, and the chill, and our isolation by this time, must have become acute. Strange noises punctuated the silence, the cracking of ice, the rustling of leaves, and something else. A dragging sound that might belong only outside our firelight. We huddled closer, telling ourselves it was just a deer or some other nocturnal creature. Morning brought no light on the creepy atmosphere. Walking around just near the tent, they found large, disturbing tracks in the snow. They were neither human nor animal, with elongated claws that drove deeply into the white blanket which covered the earth. But curiosity had bitten deep, and the precaution was thrown to the winds for them to follow the tracks. Tracks led us deeper into the woods, at length, to a part of the forest that seemed unaltered by the flow of time. The tree arches and overheat branches twisted into a grasping canopy. It was in a small clearing that we found it. A cabin, old and decrepit, its windows dark, the door slightly ajar. The tracks led right to it, disappearing into the shadows inside. We approached, hearts pounding, each step reluctant. The hut seemed empty, perhaps except for the hut itself and all the belongings left behind by the previous habitants. An old moth-eaten fur coat and dusty, lying draped over a chair, an axe, a really old one, rusted and stuck in a chopping block outside. That was when we heard it, the scream cut short, coming from back towards our camp. We took off running, slipping on the snow, our breath coming in gasps. But when we got there, Jamie was gone. His backpack lay on the ground, torn open, with its contents all over the snow. We called for him, our voices desperate, but only silence answered. Hours had passed, hours fading into the evening as the temperature dropped, and it seemed that the forest had swallowed us choking, suffocating from its hugeness. There were further sounds circsening us then, whispers born from the expiring wind, a laugh, a growl. The Wendigo was real, and it was hunting us. We hadn't slept that night, and there were little communication. At first light, we were moving out of the woods, making good time despite our exhaustion. We didn't stop until we reached the car, and even then, the relief of escape felt hollow without Jamie. The police were called, a search party was formed, but they found nothing. No sign of Jamie, just his torn backpack and those strange tracks, which they had no explanation for. They tell you not to come back, that the mystery of Frozen Lake and its Wendigo belong to shadows. Now, here I am, miles from those woods that are always full of dread, sitting and telling this story as it should be told. Jamie is still missing, his face posted on posters posted for any information, promising a come home reward. But I know we'll never see him again. But the Wendigo has owned him and still waits out there in the icy shadows of Frozen Lake, waiting for others, with hungry waiting patience, for any with curiosity and bravery to heed its call. Sometimes, in the silence of a snowy night, I can still hear it whispering, calling me back to the woods. But I will never return. Some legends are too true to test, and some places are meant to be left alone.